September 28th, two of the world's best welterweights will collide in a unification mega fight, each man preparing for the task at hand while respecting the other's talent and ability. Sean Porter is a guy who can be very relentless, a guy who's gonna come forward, he's gonna fight. For a long time, I've looked at Errol Spence as being a lot like myself. Uh, he's a competitor at heart. He gives it his all in and out of the ring. Uh, he loves what he does. He loves hurting people. He's undefeated. He's a winner. He knows how to win. Sharp, fast, quick, powerful, the whole nine. You know, a lot of ways, I'm the same way. I think this is going to be a very entertaining dog fight. And, you know, the guy who has the most nutrition, the guy who's in a better shape, in a better mind, is going to win this fight. I want Errol to go out there and show his boxing skills. I want Errol to be what he wants to be and who he wants to be. I believe that he wants to get a knockout, and so that's what I want for him. Bring it out! Bring it out! It's very hard matching. We got to do everything right. I feel like Sean has everything it takes to do it. He feels that. He believes that. I believe that. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think this is a fantastic matchup with myself and Earl Spence. I think that, you know, we, we both possess all of the skill and, and talent and, and speed and quickness. I predict this fight is going to be, you know, a war from the start, and I see me getting a TKO. I have everything that it takes to beat Earl Spence. Let me just stop right there. I'm tired. It's late. We're 18 days, 19 hours, 34 minutes away from the fight. I don't like the comments I've been reading. I don't like all the bitching I've been seeing in the chat. $75? What? We not playing? Yo, y'all make me sick. Like, for real, for real, for real. Y'all bitching, complain about everything. I understand. Pay-per-view is dying. I understand that. But it's like, yo. Like, you're going to be, how you going to watch the fight? So you're going to be a scumbag? You're saying you're going to bootleg it? You're going to be a no good lowdown? Lower than a serpent's belly scum. But yet, y'all want to be talking about, oh, wow, the turn down on like 50 million and Joshua turned down this million. And y'all talking about how all this shit about how much the motherfucking fighters be making. But yet, y'all turn down the fights. We have two. Now, let's get a little LDBC on you. Let's get a little LDBC on you. Hold on, let me move my little clock. We have two. African-American fighters headlining a pay-per-view. When was the last time this happened? Maybe it's late. I don't remember. Was it Floyd Zab? Nonetheless, in this day and age, come on, man. But anyway, moving on. Listen, we're going to talk about PBC Countdown. I was wondering why, for example, let's um, go back a little bit here. Let me pull up the Fox Sports Go app. This is what I'm watching this on, by the way. So once again, if you have Fox Sports 2 or Fox Sports at all, you have Fox Sports Go. All you got to do is get the login information from whoever in your household pays the bill, right? And you're able to watch all of this stuff. So I got some timestamps here for you. We're going to talk about the episode. I can't show you the full episode, obviously, but somehow, some way, people still get pissed off. You know what? Let's go to the next timestamp. Let's go to the next timestamp. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Love. Already, I'm untethered. So let me gather myself here. Please subscribe. We cover every single major fight live. I am T-Street Controversy. I'm untethered. Well, I got well, my name, name, name True Fast and Amateur. Was that, was that, 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 I was basically knocking everybody out. It is all. People recognize me as Showtime Sean P. They always say, all right, it's Showtime. And I say, I am Showtime. Sean Porter putting it all on the line. I think with me and Sean Porter, we're both at the top of our careers. With Sean, you know, every time he got to the top, he kind of fell short. Earl Spence took all the necessary steps to get where he's at right now. My road presented more challenges, um, but it was a road that I had to take. Sean was getting a big name because he came up with those guys, and you know it's kind of like they didn't want to let me in the door, but you know I had to kick my way down. We good friends. I love your daddy, but let's get it on. A lot of guys were looking at him like, you know, this is a young guy. He's a hard hitter. He's a southpaw. He's fast. He's sharp. That's high risk, low reward. Uh, I'm not messing with it. I'm the one that said, all right, when this fight gets made, it gets made. Hey, 
do I love work? This matchup between me and Sean Porter is important because it's two top three welterweights fighting each other. It's a unification fight. I have the IBF title. He has the WBC title. Unifying titles, I mean, that is remarkable. That is, in a lot of ways, unheard of nowadays. It's two big name fighters that's fighting each other just to see who is the top dog in the welterweight division. This can potentially rank me as pound for pound number one with my performance. You haven't seen two guys at this level go against each other in a long time. Let's talk about it. So, Errol Spence is the favorite. How does Sean Porter win? Now, Sean Porter does have the vastly better resume. 32-1 and one with 17 KOs, 31 years old. He's got your Dennis Ugas. Basically, you know, now your Dennis Ugas is a fringe star now because of um, um, his performance against Sean Porter. In my opinion, I had Sean Porter winning, but, you know, everybody, you know, depending on how you score the fights. Your Dennis Ugas didn't beat the champ. Danny Garcia, I'm from Philly. I'm sorry. I had him beating Danny Garcia. Adrian Granados, this is a nice string of fights right here. These three, look at his last four fights. You know? Andre Berto, well, you know, Andre Berto, you know. Keith Thurman, Adrian Broner, Eric Bonet, that was PBC on Spike. Uh, Kel Brook, wasn't it supposed to be Roberto Ortiz, I remember? Wasn't it? I, I think this was. You know, poor old Paulie, he did him dirty. Look at this string of fights here. Even Julio Diaz back then was significant. Phil LaGreco, the first Julio Diaz fight. Alfon, look at this string of fights. But he's never seen somebody with the boxing IQ of a uh, Errol Spence. I've always had Errol Spence's, um, 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 as a better overall boxer than Keith Thurman in my opinion, when it comes to fundamentals. But how does he win? I don't think it's in his best interest to go out there and try to box, right? That's that's no good. That's that's not going that's not going to work. While we're here, let's go look at Errol Spence. And I do have some more clips for you from PBC Countdown. Also, I got to make sure I talk about the fact that I just go ahead and say it now. What I've noticed is I was wondering while looking at the schedule, I was like, "Wait a minute." They, they aired Fight Camp last week. What was that? September the 1st? Right now, it's um, September the 10th. They aired the, the first episode of PBC Fight Camp, which is their docu-series in the build-up to the fight, about three, four episodes long. You know, they do it for their pay-per-views. They did it for um, for uh, Spence Garcia, Pack versus Thurman, and now um, Spence versus Porter. So I was like, okay, they usually do um, a PBC countdown, four episodes of PBC Fight Camp, and the PBC face-to-face -face comes for all PBC on Fox Fights, except for fucking punk-ass Mike Lee. Glove-licking, nasty-ass, spitting-in-the-ring Mike Lee. He didn't show up to the Kayla Plant when Kayla Plant was triggered. But anyway, let's stay on topic. The point I'm trying to make is, I was wondering why they split it up. So, last week was PBC Fight Camp, you know, a look into the fighters' camps and lives and the build-up to the pay-per-view. And then this week, it was PBC on Countdown. I'm thinking, like, wait a minute. Why did he do PBC Countdown, but then PBC Fight Camp anyways because of football season? So episode two, while we're here, let me show you real quick for those who really want to know. Where we at? Open up in a new tab. Fight Camp comes back on next week, episode two. Hold on, God damn it. Where we at? Where we at? Schedule? Where we at? Schedule. No, wait. That's not going to be the TV schedule. What am I doing? Oh, hold on. My bad, guys. My bad. It's late. It's late. It's late. So, yeah, this is all the Fox Sports Go. So, even face-to-face -face right now, look, this is live on um, Fox Sports 2. When I'm not going to play it, but I'm just letting you know, like, all your PBC shit, for the most part, the new stuff is here. Um, See, look, it's live. It's WBC, it's WBC champ, champ Sean Porter. Sean Porter. He would get, he an, would opportunity get an opportunity to, to, to the titles. The most recognized belt is the WBC belt, and I'm fighting for that. It's something that, you know, every fighter wants, and every fighter recognizes just being a legend overall and just the notoriety and, you know, and becoming, you know, a champion is at stake. 
As opponents, Porter and Spence are hardly strangers. They were once sparring partners. And Porter's father, father and trainer, and trainer Kenny, Porter. Kenny Porter. So you see, that's Fox Sports 2. Now, I'm doing this for a reason. It's, I know it's going to be a lot of you sons of bitches that's going to be like, yo, we already know this. No, you'd be surprised how many people don't. It's not all about you. Oh, by the way, follow me on Twitter. Oh, I'm not going to let me share it. All right, but anyway, the point what I was trying to make is, where we at? Go back. Go back. Go back. The point I was trying to make is this. If you go to the PBC or search Fox Sports Go, they have all of their stuff right here. You, well, not all of it, but sometimes they may have three to six videos you can watch. Sometimes seven you can watch on demand. But for the most part, here's the schedule. So as you can see, the next episode or new Fox uh, Spence versus Porter content is going to be on the 15th. See, it doesn't go up to the 15th for some reason. Earlier it did. But on the 15th, which is um, um, Sunday, PBC on Fox Fight Camp, Spence versus Porter episode two. So anyway, moving on. I'm not trying to count Sean Porter out. You know, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and be like, yo, man, he's going to be something Errol Spence has never seen before. 25 and over, 21 KOs, 29 years old. Mikey Garcia, listen, I don't give him no shit for Mikey Garcia, right? Because that's going to be the next clip we're going to show from um, Countdown, by the way. Because I knew what he was doing for the money to, to, to get where he is today be, to be a pay-per-view star, you know. But he wanted to show that he can outbox him. I don't know. You know, I can't give him no shit for that. However, I can't say that moves him up pound for pound rankings either, you know. Mikey Garcia should not have looked 12108, 12107. Carlos Ocampo was his mandatory. Lamont Peterson, Kel Brook. Remember, he had that little layoff. Everybody was after him, like HBO and Golden Boy. You know, Oscar De La Hoya loves him. You know, and um, Bob Barrowman, top rank, they, you know, like, everybody wants Errol Spence. He's very valuable. In fact, is he right now, maybe outside of Wilder? Maybe the most valuable. I'm talking about to all promoters, like valuable PBC fighter. Undefeated. He's a value. Anyway, moving on. So, obviously, you know, Sean Porter's resume is better. In fact, let me go to this next time stamp, stamp right here. And I can dig where they were coming from because they were getting a lot of shit about, like, you know, um, certain media members. I don't remember being on that shit, though. Saying that, you know, Mikey Garcia going to beat him and if Errol Spence don't, hell no. Just like I'm doing right now, I try to give fighters, all fighters a fair shake. They're like, maybe they can do this, maybe they can do that. But deep down in my mind, I'd be knowing better. So, but with, but, I don't honestly, I'm, I don't see, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to see how Sean Porter beats Errol Spence. I'm trying. He's going to have to maul him. I like that word, especially, you know, that I watch a lot of UFC now. He's going to have to maul him. Sean Porter's going to have to get back on that shit he was on with um with um Paulie Malignaggi. You know, Kel, well, Kel Brook, like, tied him up. Kel Brook neutralized that shit. And Errol Spence can do that. He's got to be a hybrid. He's got to be a mix from that Danny Garcia, Ugas version that he was, you know, to, to you know, that mauling style. Easier said than done, though, right? Easier said than done. Here, next clip. Yeah, Errol Spence was frustrated, and um, he he says that uh, that he wanted to show that he can outbox Mikey Garcia, and honestly, I was happy to see that. I was cool with that. But, you know, you can tell, like, he started laying on the shots more. Maybe he wanted to get the stoppage late to say that, all right, well, you know, I outboxed him, and then I knocked him out. But you know, everything doesn't work, you know, out that way. But nonetheless, he did what he was supposed to do against Mikey Garcia. Here, listen in. Please subscribe, by the way. We're not doing this for our health. On fight night after Spence versus Porter, we're going to be here. Post-fight, press conference, everything. Live. Call-ins. ...section of Mikey Garcia. Not only to the midsection, but landing flush headshots as well. Clearly, this is Spence's fight. He's in control. He's dominant so far. 
Spence is doing the right thing. He's moving around. He's throwing that right jab, and he's throwing. He's mixing up that left hand straight and around, and you know he's keeping the fight in the middle of the ring, which he's supposed to. Right now, Errol Spence is running away with it. Well, I knew in the third or fourth round that I was basically on point. I was sharp and just beating him up. And I think probably in the sixth or seventh round, he kind of got discouraged and you know basically stopped fighting a little bit. Just wanted to land one big shot. And I actually, you know, I had tougher sparring in that. Mikey's taking these punches on the chin. Yeah. I don't know how many, how much of these punches he's going to be able to take. Throughout the fight, as the rounds are going on, I'm thinking to myself that they're letting Mikey take too many punches, taking too many punches, taking too much abuse. So I'm thinking to myself, they should stop the fight. And in between the rounds, I go over to them. I said, y'all should stop the fight. And they kind of told me what I should do, you know. Go fuck yourself. He gave me the bird. It wasn't Dave with the nephew, he gave me the bird. My coach basically told me to keep out pointing them, keep touching them, and uh, if you do hurt them, go for the knockout. But if you don't, just, you know, keep beating them up. And, uh, you know, that's basically what I did, and he didn't have any answers. Now, this is when Errol Spence turns in from a championship fighter to a straight up machine. From rounds 8 through 12, he threw over 100 punches around. You really saw Mikey Garcia go into a defensive shell, and Spence controlled the distance so well that Mikey Garcia had no chance in this fight. Spence is getting 10-8 rounds without a knockdown just because Garcia can't touch him, and Spence is landing at will. It's a complete washout. You can't really ask for Spence to do much more. So the scores are announced. 120-108, 120-108, 120-107. Dallas, Texas, the truth, Errol Spence Jr. What that means is that Errol Spence won every single round of the 12 rounds on every judge's scorecard, and that one of the judges thought that he was so dominant in one of the rounds that he gave him an extra point. I think I achieved with this victory. Um, I think I, most importantly, I got new fans. A lot of Mikey Garcia fans came over and became Harold Smith Jr. fans. And um... that was the goal. That was the goal. Here, let's go look at the rankings real quick to break it down for you. Then we're going to go look at the, um, um, the full card itself. So here, let's do it this way. Sean Porter, WBC champion, Manny Pacquiao, WBA Super World champion, Earl Spence, IBF, Terrence Crawford, WBO. The PBC does not acknowledge the WBO title. In fact, they're saying that the winner of this has to fight Manny Pacquiao to be undisputed. They are it's crazy. But then if you look on the um, top rank side, and yes, I do consider the WBO a top rank, you know, belt. They got Tyson Fury as a lineal champion, and they count that as like a real championship, like a real, real championship. Mark Kriegel doing pieces and shit on it. I think that if Sean Porter wins, he has a better chance to get um, Manny Pacquiao than if Errol Spence does, my personal opinion. You can't tell the Manny Pacquiao fans that, though. They're going to be like, what, you know? But thank God right now they're in their hole. They're not going to be back until Manny Pacquiao returns in January. They're going to start resurfacing around October or some shit. Danny Garcia, we don't know what he's doing, but he can also get Manny Pacquiao. But will he stay out that long, you know? couple more months though but you know mikey garcia you know i think that he should be at 140 as you can see he's ranked by the wba at 147 <coughs> the wba would create a title for him i gotta update my rankings by the way this week the last time i updated them was uh the last week of august excuse me um your dinner zoo guys is going to be interested to see what he does next I think him versus Sergey Limpinets makes sense, or him versus Danny, in any of them versus Danny Garcia makes sense. I would see Danny Garcia fighting the Limpinets for U before Ugas, though. But if Danny Garcia fights the Ugas, big balls to him. Because those are the fight type of fighters he has issues with. Keith Thurman is still back out there, so I wonder who he's going to return against. You know, once again, Sergey Limpinets, he is like right there for those guys to fight. You see what I'm saying? Don't worry about Jesse Vargas. He's got a fight coming up likely with Liam Smith soon. Over here on the WBO side. 
Terrence Crawford is going to be fighting his mandatory Igis Kavalaskis later on this year, likely December 14th. Not fully confirmed, but yes, it's pretty much, they're saying it's, it's pretty much done for the most part. And then um, on that card is going to be Tiafimo Lopez versus um, Richard um, um, Comey. And that's 147 pounds for you. Of course, I don't have to tell you what's Jeff Horn doing here. They need to get, get him out of there. And I don't have to tell you that, you know, to get a title shot, you have to only be, well, you have to be ranked in the top 15. So any of these guys can get a title shot, you know. But those are the movers and shakers right there. Let's go look at the undercard. Anthony Durrell versus David Benavidez for the WBC championship at 168 pounds. Mario Barrios versus uh, Bakhtir Akhmedov for the um, WBA world title, a belt that I hate, um, 140 pounds. Remember, Regis Progray has the super world, so if after the winner of this, is going to be two champions at 140 for the WBA again. Jose Zito Lopez versus John Molina Jr. Remember, Jose Zito Lopez laid hands in his last fight against Keith Thurman, and then John Molina Jr. was supposed to fight Sergey Lipinets on the undercard of Pac versus Thurman. But instead, he's on here. And Robert Guerrero, the ghost, returns after the Floyd Mayweather. You know, well, it was a long time since the Floyd Mayweather fight. But hopefully he gets back to boxing and using that damn jab. I'm going to be really looking forward to that fight and watching that fight. Because if he's not out there jabbing, then it's like, bro, you still on your same shit. You're going to get beat up again eventually. Versus Jerry Thompson. We watched some tape on him last week in the chat. And then some prospects in the card like Joey Spencer. Uh, Jose Venezuela, Ludofo Delgado. What do I heard him from? I heard of him from where? So yeah, seventy four ninety nine on PBC on Fox pay per view. <sighs> Here, one more clip, and we will be moving on. Let's see, is it right here? Boom. Uh huh. You know, Sean Porter, I think this is Sean Porter's best chance to win if he if he fights like he did against um, Keith Thurman. But can you say a little more control? Can we say, you know, I don't know, how much more control? I don't know. And they, and they went at it. They broke for, for 12, 12 rounds. rounds. They threw a lot. You know, you didn't see either guy get seriously hurt, but there were a lot of close rounds. Porter mugs you on the inside, and that's what he's doing. I remember thinking, don't stop, keep going, keep going. And uh, and and he's the man. He, he brought it right back. And, I mean, we both were doing everything we had to do to win that fight. Keith Thurman, Sean Porter putting it all on the line. Bringing the fans to their feet. And, boy, they are throwing leather. Punches and punches. What a fight. Final bell rings. The entire Barclays Center on their feet. Fans at home got themselves a great fight. Razor thin. Final, Final scorecards score are red. 115, 113 across, across the board. The board. And, and still, still the You know, that'll be another, um, um, I'm going to say um, aspect of Errol Spence's game. He would be able to show if he says, OK, I'm going in there and I'm going to be ready for war against Sean Porter. And what if he's what if he, you know, like plays like Mayweather says he did against uh, Marcus Madonna in the first fight and against Miguel Cotto in their fight. And he says, you know what, I'm going to like, you know, as he said in the uh, face off or the face to face PBC face to face, you know, I'm going to negate all that shit. Like what if he, you know, beats Sean Porter, but. He fights Sean Porter's game and lets Sean Porter maybe tire himself out. Or he, I don't know. I don't know. That's something I'm just thinking about. Maybe I'm wording it wrong. Maybe you guys can help. But you see what I'm saying? What if he lets Sean Porter do all that rough shit, but it doesn't get anything done and he still beats him up? And then every now and then taking back to the middle of the ring and schooling like Floyd Mayweather would do sometimes with fighters. We're going to see Sean Porter going to have to show us some shit because if he wins, he was on top of the world. And if you want to really, really ask me, honestly, I don't think that PBC and Al Heyman and all them want him to win. Not saying, you know, and put it this way. Let's be honest, honest, honest. Errol Spence, they want him to be the poster boy, not Sean Porter. If he was to win, imagine that would turn everything on its head. That's crazy. He'd be sitting on top of the world. 
Let's see if he can deal with them. I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. Of course, we're going to be here after the fight. You know, a lot more videos coming up as we build up. What time is it? Fucking thing, two o'clock in the morning. Try to get out a couple more videos. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be here for PBC Fight Camp Episode 2. We're going to be reviewing that. Episode 3, and then, you know, it's Fight Week. I'm T Street. Oh, and also, stay tuned. There's going to be a media call coming up. I don't expect the media call to be too exciting, but I'm pretty sure they're probably going to have maybe two one for Errol Spence and one for um, Sean Porter. We're going to be streaming all of that. Please subscribe. The links to my social media has been popping up on the screen there. Also down below in the description box. Visit FightView360.com for your rankings. And make sure you cheap bastards buy Spence versus Porter. Come on, man. It's the end of the pay-per-view era. Give back.